Welcome back to DBL. It was one of the biggest manhunts in New York City history. Six years ago, two convicts escaped with the help of a prison staffer. Now a former inmate who watched it unfold is speaking out. Here's DBL's True Crime Chronicles. Richard Matt and David Sweat were two inmates convicted of first degree murder in separate cases. They were serving their sentences at the Clinton Correctional Facility in Dannemora, New York. That's where they met Joyce Mitchell. She worked at the facility's tailor shop. The three quickly formed a bond and Joyce became infatuated with the men and began having an affair. Meanwhile, Richard and David were planning an elaborate scheme to escape with the help of Joyce. They wanted her, whether it be just for sex or for a favor. I think she got off on that. Eric was an inmate at the time who also worked at the tailor shop with Joyce. He watched closely as the men seduced and manipulated Joyce in exchange for tools. Joyce brought contraband into the facility. She smuggled in blades and chisels by hiding them in frozen meat and would bribe security guards with baked goods to help her bypass the metal detectors. Using the tools, Richard and David worked for months during the middle of the night, sawing their way through and even lost weight to fit through the tunnels. The scheme worked. Richard and David escaped by cutting through walls before exiting through a nearby manhole where they planned to meet Joyce and hop in the getaway car. Being on the lam with two escaped convicts, that might be exciting. They were gonna dump her as soon as they could. Joyce got cold feet and never showed. The escape prompted one of the biggest manhunts in New York State history. Interstates shut down, nearby schools closed, and at one point, more than 500 officers were involved. As the search grew, Joyce was arrested and charged. If I could take it all back, I would. I can't begin to explain how sorry I am for all this. Almost a month after the escape, Richard was spotted in Franklin County. During a police confrontation, he was shot and killed. This is the camper where uh, Matt was hiding and where the police finally got him. Two days later, a state trooper spots David walking just a mile and a half from the Canadian border. He was just, at, just about at the tree line. He attempted to run off, prompting a state trooper to fire his gun. David was hit twice, but survived. Could they have done it without Joyce? And what was really in it for her? Earlier, Eric and I spoke with Eric Jensen, and here's what he had to say. We are here with Eric Jensen. Eric, thank you so much for joining us on DBL. This is such a fascinating story. You worked closely with Joyce in the Clinton Correctional Facility's tailor shop while you were an inmate there. So what was your very first memory of meeting Joyce, and what kind of person does she appear to be to you? Clinton Correctional Facility, you know, let me just say is. Um, not a nice place, and it's very tense. You can feel the tension. It hovers like a nimbus cloud. When I walked in there, it was kind of like a laid-back place. She was very personal. She would be very friendly, flirtatious. Um, you can see that she was very interactive with everybody in that cell shop. At what point did you start to realize she was being manipulated by Richard and David, and were you aware that they were planning an escape? I was there in 2011, 2011. Well, um, which was three years prior to the escape. She would bring stuff in for David, stuff that he wasn't supposed to have, like extra food, art supplies, tattoo supplies. Um, and she would spend time with him a lot of time, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I mean, he was the inmate supervisor and she was the civilian supervisor. So they had to have a very close relationship. And, you know, they would go back and forth, laughing, joking, talking all day long, you know, and sometimes they would go into that back room, the material room, for quite a bit of time, you know, and um, we all kind of knew there was something going on, but we could never, like, you know, we, didn't, we couldn't prove it. And nobody would dare say anything about it because, you know, then you'd be labeled a snitch. But after I did leave, um, David did get kicked out of the tailor shop for inappropriate behavior with Joyce. And um, I believe then that's when Matt took over and started the whole manipulative process over again. You know? But this time, he raised the stakes. You know, he, 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 you know, he wanted to be out. As a former inmate, you have a very unique perspective on all of this. So did you ever think that this elaborate escape could actually be done? And when you heard about it, did you think that Joyce was involved? When you pull up to that uh, prison in Danamora and you come down the main strip, you look up at these walls that tower over the street. It's like a fortress. 
and you were like, you know, there's no way getting out of here. That morning I woke up and I'm making coffee and I'm looking at the TV and I'm like, wait, that's that's David and that's that's Ricky. I'm like, they broke out and I automatically knew they had help, but I didn't think Joyce was the one that helped them. Um, you know, at first they said they had power tools and, you know, then, it, you know, come to find out she's the one that brought it to them. This story actually inspired the series Escape at Denimore, which you helped yes. write and create. What was that like working with actors like Ben Stiller and reliving that life for you again? It was a very, very unique uh, experience, um, one that actually changed my life and actually helped me move forward in a different direction away from just prison stuff. Um, and get my foot in the door in the entertainment business as well. I worked with the writers for about 18 months before Ben came on, and then we got greenlit by Showtime. Ben, he's an amazing person. Uh, even his directing skills are off the off the chart. Being able to play and have a role, uh, it was a small role. It opened up my mind and my eyes to a whole different world, you know? It's like, you know, the world I was used to was prison and coming up, and I had, you know, my, my childhood and growing up wasn't the best. And being able to now see a different path in life, um, it was really uh, uh, you know, a, a life-changing event. Where is Joyce today, and do you think that she learned her lesson? Joyce, um, as far as I know, last time I heard, uh, Joyce was up in Malone working at a McDonald's. I haven't, you know, I haven't had any contact with her. It's hard to tell if somebody's learned their lesson. Prison is a really tough and hard environment, and it, there's one or two ways you come out of there. You either come out better or you come out worse. I hope she's really learned her lesson. And, um, you know, I hope she just moves forward. I wish her all the best and uh, that she doesn't, um, you know, make the same mistakes. You can watch new episodes of Cellmate Secrets every Friday on Lifetime. And the Joyce Mitchell episode debuts this Friday, June 18th on Lifetime. Thank you again. Thanks, Eric. We'll be right back. You're very welcome.